Hello and long time no see. This is the Seed of Andromeda Biome Editor 1. This is going to be the first video showcasing the Biome Editor. Now the Biome Editor is not quite done yet. There's a lot to do, but I'll go ahead and show you what I have so far because there is some stuff that I can show off. So I'll go ahead and click over to the Biome Editor and you'll notice that my view distance immediately gets much, much larger. Uh, this is so that you can really see what your changes on the biomes will do on a worldwide scale. Uh, because if we just have this small area, some biomes are very rare and you may not actually see any of the biome in your, in your current area. So what we do is we modify the biomes one at a time. So let's go ahead and grab a biome. Let's do the semi-arid desert. I like that one and it's pretty easy to show off. Alright, so that's going to load everything in. Alright, so here's our semi-arid desert biome. It's one I made a long time ago. It could use some changes. Uh, so let's see what we can do. What can we change? Well, we can change the tree chance down here. Uh, just by changing these sliders, what it'll do is change the base chance of trees appearing in the biome. We will also be able to change what trees appear in the biome and uh, possibly apply some extra noise on top of that. And we'll also be able to change what flora are in the biome. But right now, uh, these features have not been implemented. Uh, what else can we do? we can change the block IDs see here if I change the surface block ID to 22 which is actually a non-existent block everything turns black uh, you can change the rain you can change uh, the temperature these are actually the ranges in which the uh, biome will be found uh, you'll notice this is 150 to 999 this just ensures uh, because right now the, the minimum temperature is zero and the maximum temp temperature is 2 55, I believe. Uh, this ensures that the or the semi-arid desert biome will happen no matter how hot it is. Uh, and then, so what you need to do is actually, I'll put something in the description because I don't really have the time to explain exactly how the biome system works, but I have explained it before in a Reddit post on the Seed of Andromeda subreddit. So I'll go ahead and send you a link, uh, or I'll put a link in the description for that. Look out for that. And hopefully it'll, it'll kind of explain what a lot of these things do. Uh, let's load this back. No. All right, anyways, so what else can we do? Uh, let's fly up, change some things. Now, what you're seeing here is this kind of pinkish, uh, reddish part is where all of the uh, all of the sand, all of the red sand is. And this, this means that this is where the biome actually exists. Uh, let me fly down here and show you the transition down here. The, the kind of tan area is just um, no biome. There's no biome here. And then the red area is the semi-arid desert. Now what this shows is it shows the distribution of the biome over the world. So normally there would be a lot of other biomes in place of this kind of non-existent spot here. And there may even be other biomes overriding the semi-arid desert here. Uh, but we can actually, uh, let's see... Actually, let's not mess with that. Although we can change the color of the terrain by changing the temperature and rainfall. I don't think I showed you that. It's kind of cool. Uh, the grass color is actually dependent on the uh, temperature and rainfall, which is why as I raise rainfall, you'll notice the grass color gets you know more of a lush color. All right, let's go back down. See, once we got to 80 or 90, uh, we went outside the bounds. If you'll see down here, rain 20 to 95, that means the biome is not going to appear anywhere else but in the range 20 to 95. So since we have rainfall 98, which is across the entire world, you will see no biome. So let's go back down into the range. That should do it. Now, so what about uh, what about this? Like, how do we change this? Well, to do that, let's fly up high, and let's modify the distribution noise function. This stuff right here is outdated. All right. So, this is the noise function changing screen. I'm going to be using this, uh, well, you will be using this to change lots of different noise functions. Now, what is a noise function? That is how terrain is generated. That's how you get, you know, any kind of uh, uh, natural randomness to the world. And you can just change these parameters here to uh, kind of just change how the distribution works. So, what these do is the octaves is basically uh, the number of passes it's going to do. As I increase this, you're going to see uh, the shape turn into less of a blob and more of a you know coherent shape. And we can also increase the persistence, which means each octave is going to apply more of a change. 
Uh, we can do things like that. So let's lower it back down to about where it was. Uh, the fewer octaves you have, the faster it's going to generate. Though since this is since this is two-dimensional noise, it's still going to generate fast even if you have 12 octaves. All right, so we can also change the frequency. As I move this frequency slider, you'll notice the higher the frequency, you know, the more wavy it is, the more little patches you get, um, which kind of makes sense if you know what frequency is. If you've ever, you know, looked at a sine function, cosine function, the higher the frequency, the closer the waves are together. So let's move that back down. We also have these two, which are a little bit more complicated. And I understand a lot of this is going to seem very complicated to you. Um, eventually, there'll be some good tutorials on how to do this, and I'll probably put some videos out really explaining how to make biomes. Um, but what this does, these two things, is it determines the distribution of um, where the biome uh, exists. If we set this occurrence low bound to zero, then it's going to exist almost everywhere as long as uh, temperature permits it. Um, so I put it at zero, now we have red everywhere. If I move it back, uh, it's going to change to where you know there's less and less. The higher this number is, the less area you're going to get that is actually the biome. And if you'll notice, as I move this up, it's just kind of creeping inwards. It's getting a little bit smaller. And it goes from zero to one. At one, it doesn't exist at all. So let's put it at about 0.5, let's say. All right, that's good. Actually, okay, there we go. All right, so if we'll look down here, let's fly down here, you will see that there is a terrain feature from the semi-arid desert outside of the semi-arid desert. We are having a little plateau shape, but really the plateau shapes are only being created by the semi-arid desert. And if you notice on this transition right here, uh, it just kind of slowly gets smaller and smaller. Now what's causing that is this transition link. This is how we interpolate uh, between uh, the uh, semi-arid desert and everything else, basically. If we make this zero, there's going to be no transition. So if we fly out to where the transition stops, we get a completely flat cliff face. And we don't want that. It doesn't look good at all. So we can just increase this transition link. If you look at the stuff in the middle here, as we increase this transition length, uh, that stuff is going to actually get a little smaller and we're going to get less and less of the biome because the, the, the interpolation is causing um, the biome to not always appear there. If we lower this, we can get the biome to appear you know, more where we want uh, and then we can increase the interpolation some more like this to get you know, a much smoother effect. You just have to use these two variables in conjunction with each other to try to get the smoothest transition that you can have, as well as having enough area. Uh, let's go ahead and mess with another biome, uh, the sandy desert. Oh crap, I didn't put a back button in yet. <laughs> I actually just made this today, hold on one second. And we're back, sorry about that guys. This is what happens when I make a video without properly testing. Anyways, we are now in a sandy desert biome that I went ahead and loaded in. Uh, I want to go ahead and show you guys real quick uh, a minor change I made to Seed of Andromeda in the form of the lighting shaders. Uh, as you can see, now whenever the sun sets, we get kind of an orange glow on the blocks. And that is because we now have uh, some diffuse lighting. Uh, I don't know if you... It's basically directional lighting. Diffuse lighting is just the light you get from a direction. Rather than just pure voxel light, we kind of combine... Uh, the sunlight with the, or the, the diffuse sunlight with the rest of the uh, voxel lighting stuff. And it gives us a, a nice effect, plus we get to keep, you know, light that doesn't go through walls and things like that. And we also get a specular component. I don't know if you can see very well. Uh, that just means it's a little bit glossier than normal. You get kind of a shine effect more than usual. Uh, you'll notice there's no uh, sunset. The world editor doesn't actually display the sunset. Uh, but Everything else is pretty much the same as it is in the normal game. All right, so I just want to mess around with this a little more so you guys can see what all it can do. What all can it do? All right, uh, we can do this. Uh, the way that it got the red color in the semi-arid desert is from this right here, is we set alt color. And if I turn that to one, then whenever I change uh, these sliders right here, nothing's going to happen. Isn't that magical? 
Okay, so this is also broken. I'm not sure what else I can show you guys. I do want to get this video out, but there isn't a whole lot that is currently working. Uh, we can change uh, transitions for temperature and rainfall. Uh, those don't appear to be doing anything simply because the temperature and rainfall is uniform across the entire thing. I guess we can mess around with uh, the distribution functions and see what happens. Let's turn frequency ridiculously high. Oh, there we go. Alright, so this is what happens when you have a really high frequency. Let's fly down here. We just get big, crazy mountains because we're getting uh, very small areas of uh, sandy desert biome next to small areas of no biome at all. Uh, and what we can also do is decrease transition length to zero. There we go, and now we have like big flat cliffs. Uh, it's weird. Alright, I can't think of anything else. Um, stay tuned for a future video. Uh, this terrain modification, uh, th this noise function thing is going to come in very useful uh, for the rest of the biometer. You're going to be able to actually create you know, mountains and things like that. You won't just be able to modify the distribution. You'll be able to change everything else. And there's also going to be some noise visualization tools, I think, uh, so that you can kind of better figure out how you want uh, your noise to work. That's the best as I can do to explain it. Uh, so thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. No promises on when it will be.